Hello and welcome to another episode of the Classical Republican. We're here with uh, Isaac, aka Anarcho Webbit, and uh, and we're going to be talking about UBI. So, um, so my first question is, what to you would comprise a legit the legitimate elements of UBI? Well, uh, UBI is um, obviously universal basic income for anyone who may not know, um, you know, government or, you know, you know, some entity of the government, um, you know, pays people or their citizens money free of charge, you know, no strings attached, um, I guess would be my sense of UBI. Some people um, like it to be means tested, uh, meaning if you have to fit a certain uh, requirement or number of requirements to be eligible for the universal basic income. However, I don't see that as being universal. Um, that is just a uh, basic income, I guess. Um, so uh, the, I guess to answer your question, the elements, I guess, would say it has to be universal. It has to be uh, anyone has to be able to get it. No strings attached, things like that. Um, I believe it has to be um, enough money to um, pay for basic needs and or anything. Um, a lot of people have different definitions of what counts as a basic need or how much, you know, it counts for a basic need. But um, that would be, I guess, my uh, perception of what a UBI should be. Okay. Um, so you mentioned uh, means testing, and I think a lot of people, I mean, yeah, if you have means testing, that definitely takes the U out of UBI. Um, but a, a lot of people uh, still define it um, as uh, just getting it because you're a citizen. Um, but as someone who doesn't believe in the state, um, would it just require residency or how would you, how would you, uh, would you be peculiar about that or would you just anyone who's there? Well, um, my ideal um, society or, you know, government form or for a lack thereof, I guess, um, it, w it wouldn't have any type of currency. So in my uh, thought, UBI would be sort of a um, sort of a transition or, you know, something that we can use to get to, you know, anarchism or communism. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I prefer, you know, universal basic services, universal basic rights, things like that, um, where everything, you know, is, is freely available to the general population, um, rather than it being money, um, because I believe having money in circulation creates a sort of hierarchy where you have the haves and the haves not, have nots, and getting rid of the currency in the market form, um, you know, balances out the playing field, you know, everyone free and equal. So uh, my ideal society wouldn't have a currency-based UBI, but, but rather a um, universal basic services. Um, and I used to write for a uh, now defunct organization known as the People's Basics, um, which was advocating for universal basic rights and services. Um, I wrote about, um, let's see, I'm trying to exactly remember what my... Um, my articles were about. I had one about uh, the future of children, you know, have children of the future and, um, you know, we need to prepare them and let them lead the way. And my other one, I believe, was about uh, mutual aid and how that is a more effective uh, economic um, economic system than capitalism or the market form. Um, and I think mutual aid perfectly embodies sort of what I would see as universal basic uh, within my society i guess i would say um i don't know if it answered the question or if i went off track but yeah uh, do, would you would you say that um would you see would you envision uh your version of ubi um uh operating within a mutual aid organization would that be fair to say or is it different? Uh, yes how uh, I am an advocate, I, I want to say, I am an advocate of UBI within a capitalist society. Um, I think having UBI within a capitalist society um, allows more revolutionary people to 
uh, fundraise and you know bankroll their their revolutionary activities and set up mutual aid projects. Um, some people within the the anarchist or you know radical left scene see that as sort of uh, like the state and capitalism legitimizing itself, which I agree with to some extent. Um, however, I think if um, you know if there a UBI is in place, one people would be able to afford their basic needs you know, easier. Plus, we would have a little bit more money and supplies to sort of bring a revolutionary movement to the the current system and replace it. Um, so that that's why I'm an advocate for UBI, because not only does it help people, but it allows us to, you know, uh, you know, start making the transition, I guess, and start organizing ourselves. Um, yeah. Okay, well, very good. Um, you answered a lot of my questions, um, the, even the questions I didn't ask you, but, um, the, uh, I think the, um, uh, would you want to go into more detail about the transition that really interested me that, um, you know, operating, um, uh, UBI within the capitalist system as a, uh, stepping off or stepping stone, uh, into, um, into a, a better, uh, maybe organized, uh, anarchist society. So what, how, how would UBI change uh, at the different levels? Or would, you, would it just stop at a certain point? Um, well, I think the the UBI, uh, you know, obviously one, taking care of people's basic needs within capitalism, which is something capitalism doesn't do very well, is take care of people's basic needs. Um, so I think that one is, you know, a good thing, even though it sort of legitimizes and solidifies capitalism to some extent. Um, I think that UBI is, you know, useful for uh, revolutionaries or people who want to uh, separate themselves from capitalist society. So, um, it would be theoretically possible with a large enough UBI to completely drop out of the capitalist system and uh, sustain yourself and your neighbors um, without contributing to the state or capitalism, other than you know receiving the UBI payment. Um, you know, doing whatever you need to do to get the UBI payment, of course. But um, once you have the payment, um, if you're using it for your basic needs, that's cool. If you want to use it for anything other than that, that's also cool. Um, personally, if a UBI were, you know, introduced today, I would use it as, um, I would probably use it to take care of, you know, minimal basic needs. But I would also like to fund more, you know, mutual aid projects, especially in this area. There's not many uh, happening. Um, I would also, you know, spend the UBI on, uh, you know, on supplies and, you know, things to teach people about, you know, anarchism and sort of get people, uh, you know, more talking about this idea and, you know, uh, you know, propaganda, I guess, <laughs> uh, is one way you could put it. Um, I think uh revolutionary movements they don't start from nowhere and they all you know need some sort of funding so i think it would be a nice little sense of irony for the the u.s government to to fund groups that are uh, willing to to take it down and everything it stands for so i think that would be a, a nice little uh, irony there but um i think it would be helpful to uh to you know revolutionary groups such as you know john brown gun club or um, you know, just any mutual aid project to have that extra bit of funding um, to try and raise awareness for, for, you know, the sort of ideas that we're pushing. Um, and as far as the transition from the current state of things to, you know, my ideal state of things, um, and as far as the UBI fits into that, um, I think once we ach achieve uh, the revolutionary ideals we're striving for, um, the UBI would be unnecessary. Um, so we could, you know, immediately stop payments, you know, I guess, uh, depending on, you know, your area and how things are going in there. And if uh, there's still a, a sense of um, needing some sort of payment to ease the transition more, um, because obviously it's not going to be an overnight switch from, you know, state and the capitalism to you know, state, no capitalism. It's impossible to do an overnight switch. So obviously there's going to be a little bit of overlap. Um, but I think we should, we would have to be careful in my scenario to not, uh, you know, end up in a lot of the trappings of, you know, Marxist Leninism, where you 
legitimize your need to use utilize the state and then you get caught up in your your own uh, methods and you lose sight of your goals um things like that so i don't think a ubi should be gradually uh phased out i guess um i i guess it i do think it should be gradually phased out however i don't think there should be uh defined stages of we should phase it out when we meet these requirements phase it out more when we meet these requirements um i just think once it becomes unnecessary um then we shouldn't do it anymore as long when people have all their needs met and we don't need money then we don't do it um if that makes sense yeah okay well thank you very much um well that's all i have do you have any other comments on ubi before we go um yes actually so uh, uh if you if people don't know me <laughs> um some people who are saying this might know me and a little bit about my uh, political journey, but uh, originally, but when I first started, you know, being uh, heavily interested in politics, I was a uh, an Andrew Yang fan, which is um, a very far away from where I am now. Um, but it was UBI that got me actually thinking about more, you know, socialist policies and things like that. It was, uh, you know, Andrew Yang's campaign actually who. Uh, turned me into a socialist, which is funny enough. Um, so, and a lot of uh, people on the left, uh, like, you know, socialists and namely people who were more for Bernie Sanders, uh, they rejected UBI and Andrew Yang outright because it uh, didn't immediately fix the problems of capitalism, which um, I'll admit it doesn't immediately fix the problem of the capitalism. And um, like I said before, at some to some extent, it does reinforce capitalism and legitimize it. Um, however, I think rejecting it outright is uh, not a good idea um, because, you know, from my own experience, having that sort of uh, idea um, can lead people to, you know, uh, into our movement. And I think just rejecting it as a capitalist band aid rather than, um, you know, a socialist solution is uh you know harmful and i think more people on the left should embrace ubi um i do think andrew yang's campaign was a little uh um some could say lackluster on the the U framing of ubi uh because to some extent his campaign did believe that it should replace all welfare um which i'm I'm not a proponent of, I don't think we should replace all welfare with the UBI. I think it should be supplemental to welfare. Um, and I think any socialist movement that wants to reach the masses should adopt a UBI plan that is better than Andrew Yang's plan, which in a lot of ways, a UBI could be better than Andrew Yang's plan. Um, so I think it is a policy that people on the left need to, uh, you know, pick up and champion more than they're doing now. Um, so that is my message to people who may be watching this. Uh, you know, research UBI if you're a socialist or, you know, on the left somewhere. I think it's a, a good policy that anyone from any political spectrum could really benefit from um, or support. Um, so, yeah, that's my message. Support UBI. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You have a good day. Thank you.